Hello world, how's it going? I got a special treat for you guys today. I got the special guest, the legendary Ted Judy. He told me not to call him legendary, so I had to. <laughs> but he's a legend to me. Aquatic experience, I know that Lucas is going up there this weekend as well, up in Chicago. If anybody's gonna be around, come see us up there. Yep, so we'll both be there at the Aquatic Experience. I know a lot of you guys are excited for that. There's been a lot of buzz about it. And it'll be an exciting time. We'll be doing live streams there as well. And why I got you guys in here, and Ted here, if you guys got questions you want to ask him or just to say hello, lots of hellos to you, Ted, actually. I mean, ask, you ask, ask, ask real quick because he's holding this phone up and his arm's going to get tired. <laughs> so uh, ask questions. Quick, fast, now. So much fish star charisma, yeah. So what do you think of the fish room, Ted? It's nice. I like it. And it's uh, very clean. Plants are beautiful. Fish are beautiful. Shrimp are beautiful. So clean. Uh, the blue dream shrimp, oh my god. Mm -hmm. I mean, every single shrimp in that tank is deep blue. Um, and you do it with almost no filtration or very little filtration. Tell me about your water changing. So, I mean, I, I've seen you turn a couple of valves. Yeah, so pretty much some people have seen it already. I've got these valves down here, which I can open up and fill each tank up. So I can fill up this whole row at once as well. And okay. it can go with either hard or soft water. So what, I see a little, little screen on the bottom. Is it like a stainless steel mesh screen? Yeah, yeah, that's actually to help keep it from when the water comes down to right, throwing all to the plants around. Yeah, yeah. I've never seen, what, so what is that for I mean what is I mean you didn't buy that where'd you get that it was a stainless steel intake for to keep shrimp from getting sucked into filters oh so it is something that's made for aquariums yeah it is made for aquariums ah, okay. mostly in the shrimp hobby all right yeah mm -hmm. and got them from China all right yeah that's normally you see something cheaper. like that that's something that's made for you know kitchens right or something and then we, we repurposed it for aquariums but right. that's pretty cool and we got a $2 super chat. Thank you, Steve Foy, for that. Glad you can uh, make it here. He's in Europe, so he's like finally got un got in here. Got you at last, Lucas. All right. Let's see. Just inherited my first cherry shrimp. Have you ever kept them before? What is the most essential What's piece of shrimp? advice you can give me? Yes, I... I never heard of those before. What's it? <laughs> <laughs> the cherry shrimp? Cherry shrimp. Neocaridinias. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. You're kidding. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, I think that a lot of us have started with cherry shrimp. Uh, for a long time, it was about the only shrimp that was out there that was colorful. Um, great one to start with, though. It's going to learn a lot about shrimp. Yeah. And they do pretty good in soft and hard water. You just got to make sure there's some calcium in there for them to nibble on. But they do prefer the harder water for sure. And I'm guessing you're new to my channel if you're asking me if I've ever kept shrimp. So, welcome. How many Tetras has Ted bred? Roger Deadham wants to know. I... I don't know. Too many to count. I, you know, it wasn't really my specialty. I've done quite a few, but it wasn't like I was trying to work my way through them or anything. Um, at least a dozen or a couple dozen. Um, egg scatterers. I find that that egg scatterers compared to cichlids and things like that may be a little more labor intensive, but they're faster. You can collect eggs on one day, they hatch two days later, you're raising fry. If the fish are in good condition, they'll lay eggs almost every day or every other day. Whereas cichlids, you know, because they raise all their fry, you might get a spawn, you know, once a month or once every two months or, or maybe even once or twice a year. Uh, so the Danios and the Barbs, the Reservoirs, rainbow fish lay eggs every day. A lot of the egg scatters are a lot more forgiving from a, from a breeding perspective, if you get them set up right. Makes sense. And somebody asked if you have any uh, tips on breeding of pistos. Now, I haven't bred many pistos, so you would be a better uh, guy to ask for that. Well, you know, different pisto groups have different characteristics. Some are pair spawners, you know, one male, one female, that's actually quite a few of the pistos out there. If you have multiple males in the tank, then the males kind of bother each other more than they work on, on breeding with the females. 
Um, so that's probably the first advice I can have. My experience, and people may argue with me, that in most tanks, most situations, one male, um, and then some species do okay with multiple females, so like a Pistogramma cacatoides, which is one of the more common ones and easier ones to breed. A, you could do like a 30-gallon aquarium that has one male and, say, three small females. Each of the females will have a little territory and they'll all spawn. But other things like a Pistogramma panduro or a Pistogramma nizini, you have more than one female in there and they're going to kill each other. So do a little research, find, the, find out which species are harem spawners and which ones are just pair spawners, and uh, go with that. All good tips. And any tips or tricks for breeding con Congo Tetris? Yeah, have you tried those yet? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've bred Congo Tetris. I mean, the way they do it commercially is pairs. They'll actually have just one female and one male. The secret is getting the females conditioned separately from the males because they're like any other Tetra. They'll lay eggs almost every day, but they won't lay a whole lot of eggs. It's a big fish. They only lay a mm. lot of eggs. So the, the way I did it was I would take like 10 females and 10 males, and I would separate them in different tanks for like a week or two weeks, give them lots of food, and the females get big and heavy. And then I would actually take one male and one female in a very small aquarium with covered with mops on the bottom. And then I would like two and a half gallon tanks, maybe I'd have five of those and one male and one female in each tank, and then put them in there at night. And then the next morning when the lights come on, maybe they would spawn, maybe they wouldn't. Uh, then you come in a few hours later after the lights come on and pick the mop up and if you see eggs and they're really big eggs you go put all the fish back in with the other adults and you just hatch those eggs that were there um, and the Congo eggs and the West African tetra eggs um, are a little different than South American tetra eggs are more like rainbow eggs they actually take uh, some species take multiple days to hatch they actually might go a week incubating but whereas a lot of South American tetra and smaller tetra species when the eggs hatch they have a larval stage where they kind of just vibrate on the bottom, you don't want to feed them or anything. Um, and rainbows don't do that, right? Rainbows, as soon as they hatch, they eat. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of Congo tetras and some of your other African big tetras are that way. They take longer for the egg to hatch, but when they do hatch, they're ready to eat. They're as big as a rainbow fry. Awesome, awesome. Well, Kyle, I hope that helps you out. Those were some great tips. Some knowledge being dropped. And also, Blue Fair 21 wants to know, easiest tetra to spawn. Do you have one? That you know, here's, here's, that here's, okay, here's, here's the secret to figuring out what Tetras are easy to spawn. When you go to your pet store, the Tetras that cost $2 are all raised in Florida or Asia, and they're the easiest ones to spawn. Glow Light Tetras are really easy to spawn. Ember Tetras are really easy to spawn. Um, Black Neon Tetras are really easy to spawn. Um, all that kind of stuff like that. The, the blue tetras, things like cardinal tetras, neon tetras, green neons, they're hard to spawn even though they're done in captivity now. They have special requirements, but they're also usually a little more expensive. If I was going go, go to the, if I was gonna go to the pet store and pick tetras to spawn that are easy to start with, black neon tetra, uh, glow light tetra, pristella tetra, um, lemon tetra, and then if you want to get away from tetras and start going into barbs and things, tiger barbs are pretty easy, black ruby barbs are pretty easy, uh, cherry barbs, gold barbs, they're pretty easy to do, um, and then most of the danios are pretty easy also. And they all, they all spawn the same way. All right. And Rummy knows. i got to ask this question for Dank Tanks. He's always all, all about his Rummy knows. Any advice on this? Uh, I've never spawned Rummy knows. Uh, that's one that requires a little... Um, uh, a little more tension to cleanliness of water and water conditions, depending on where the rummy nose come from and the species of rummy nose it is, because right. there are many species of rummy nose. Uh, there's a couple guys over in Europe that do it pretty regularly. One thing I do know about them is they're nocturnal spawners, so mm -hmm. they typically spawn when the lights are out. Uh, so it's one of those things where if you turn the lights on and expect to see them spawning, they may be just eating the eggs. Uh, so you may want to, this is something you have to look for the eggs right away in the morning. Uh, cardinal tetras, neon tetras, green neon tetras are all the same way. Most of them are night spawners. All right. And last question here before we got to hop off because he's got to get back and get ready for his talk for the club. But there's a club member in here, Chris. I don't know how to pronounce your last name, Chris. <laughs> Chris E. We'll call you Chris E. Ted, what's your favorite West African fish? Pelvic Acromus pulker. Okay. 
the All right. common the common crib. That's my it's my absolute favorite. It's the first sick that I ever had. It's the first fish I ever spawned. First fish I spawned on purpose, and I, I I'm actually embarrassed to say that right now at this moment is probably the first time in my aquarium keeping life where I actually don't have that species in any of my aquariums. Um, and it, it's, a, it's a hole that has to get filled sometime soon. Um, but yeah, hey, great questions. I mean, whenever I do a live stream, mm -hmm. all we ever talk about is beer. I mean, <laughs> you guys need to come over and, and watch me live stream sometime so you can ask questions. Yeah, because he can talk about fish a all lot. They, He's all got they, a ton all of they say is, what kind of beer are you drinking now? <laughs> is it a good beer? Is it a hoppy beer? Is it not an Iowa beer? Iowa beer sucks. Yeah. Indiana beer probably sucks too. Well, well there's some <laughs> good ones around. Well, maybe I'll find out later. Yeah, yeah. There's lots of microbrews. All right. There. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Got to make it short, like I mentioned. And thank you all for coming, asking thank you. questions, and check out Ted's channel. He's got a channel as well. And anything else you'd like to say to him? No, I don't. Unfortunately, I don't post a whole lot on my channel a whole lot anymore. Uh, I believe the channel is actually Ted Judy, not Ted's Fish Room. Uh, but uh, probably the most interesting on there is probably the series from Columbia from last year. Yeah, Nineteen a part series. series on the trip that we took to Columbia. I did have a new video just earlier this week, just aquascaping a little ten gallon tank. I was bored. Well, all right. Well, till next time, or probably tomorrow. And I got another video coming out for you guys today too. So you guys are getting a two for today. It's a special fish room tour, so that'll be coming out, and I'm sure I'll see you guys tomorrow on a live stream. And come to Aquatic Experience this weekend in Chicago. It's going to be a good time. Yeah, check it out. So, till next time, peace.